Your hosts, Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doug Dunbar. I'm sorry, I like I took us off mute, but I forgot like you need to see us too. I was like, okay, we're off mute. Wait, why isn't it working? It's two different oh. things. Okay, well that about sums up my week. Well, I would. How have uh, y'all been? I would like to uh, reposition the camera. You want to reposition the camera? Yeah. Could could I get you to? Okay, I'm going to go to splash Wait, screen. No, no, leave it alone. Oh, no, you're not going to go to splash screen? Okay. you got to move it towards... That way. Doug. No. Just pick it up and no, twist. No, you got to move it towards Greg. There we go. Thank you. Oh, good. Perfect. Leave it alone. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. See? I asked you before... It looked good to me. I asked you if you checked all that stuff out. You're killing me. Anyway, well, happy kind, Friday. Yeah, okay. it's kind of our... <laughs> when I'm talking, it's Friday, my show, it's okay? Our, Just get that straight. Yeah, it's our... Uh, <laughs> Are you still Kind here? of our uh, St. Patrick's Day show because, well, after tonight, we're on a little spring hiatus. We are. We'll talk more yeah, about that later. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, so... I love the hats, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's festive. I'm going to wear this to bed. I ain't even playing. Just, You're going to put it I'm down I'm going to show you my lucky though, charms. You? <laughs> You're going to wear it like a thong, aren't you? They're way too big for a thong. <laughs> Let's see. Get off uh, me. Yep, Get off it me. is too big. Get off Sorry. Me. Too big. So, you're trying to touch me all the time. What the hell's wrong with you? I know. I'm surprised you put a hat on. You didn't want to mess your hair up. That's it. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> oh, uh, crap. Yeah. Oh, Mark's out there. Nice hats. Loves it. Awesome. Steve Williams says, what's happening? What's happening, my oh, brother? Oh, Mark is, yeah, I forgot to send him the show link. But uh, see uh, Black here? Sea's here nonetheless. Did, um, is Welcome, my brother uh, my brother smoking any Cohibas tonight? He didn't say. He oh, just says, oh. what's happening? What's happening? Oh. What's happening, mm -hmm. hot stuff? Anyway. All right. Full of one-liners from yes. movies. Absolutely. So, what's up? Well, we had seems like we had some more fun this week at we Royal do. Havana. We so did have some fun at Royal Havana. One of our doing sponsors a, doing a lot of stuff yeah. with cigars uh, for uh, an upcoming uh, wizard see the, episode. Uh, that I see a lot of people posting on uh, Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. Another one of our sponsors doing well. Yeah. Yeah. So people are uh, re interacting with uh, the Whiskey Roundtable. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. And so that's the good thing you brought that up. Who are some of our sponsors? Uh, we have, uh, oh, Jesus. Well, the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op, yes. Royal Havana Cigars, of course, Village Martini, Simply Greek, Low Imports, LLC, the Great Cognac People, Rolling Smoke, Barbecue, of course, Chagrin Valley Beverage, 21 Stays, North Coast Jazz Ensemble, and last but certainly not least, Rawhide, Rawhide Firearms. Firearms. Rawhide. Marky Mark. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Too funny. So yeah. what are you smoking, G? I'm smoking a Gurkha uh, cigar. This is one of the cigars from Royal Havana, and uh, it's a Nicaraguan blend cigar. So, so uh, my, a lot of my, uh, my posse, my family, they're all kind of tied up tonight, as it were. My girls are down in. They tied up like in the basement, or no? The girls are down in Orlando together, doing uh, all that. You know the. They Universal, um, Disneyland, Disney World, all that kind of stuff. So, so they're yeah, it looks like they were having fun too. Yes, they, Should we show that, everyone uh, that's, their picture? That's, yeah, yeah. They're in Jacksonville then, right? Is that well, they were over on that side earlier in the week, or Kayla was okay. over in uh, what is it, uh, Saint Augustine? Saint Augustine. And now, cool city. Uh, now then, Lindsay met her over in Orlando. So they're gotcha. Oh, in Orlando. Doing some Maybe stuff it is Orlando. there. Yeah. yeah. And Cameron has started a new job this week. Uh, All right. Film industry. He's so he's working till six LA time. So he uh, just got off. But Lauren, I think is is joining us. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what. 
so uh, so uh, I, I have a couple quick questions. Yeah. What are we sampling? What are we, what are we sampling at the table today? I never asked that question. I'm just curious. Well, <laughs> you got a couple <laughs> things going on here. What? You look like uh, Doug. I'm Fresh. married. <laughs> I'm sampling a Me little too. bit. Of, I'm, my pre-show is a little bit of the Michael Collins from the ah, last, last show. week. Yeah, okay, so, good deal. Good uh, deal. Sticking with the Irish theme is that right. right. I'm uh, I'm doing a uh, Devil's River. Compliments okay. of uh, one of our guests tonight, Rob. Thank you very much. And um, this is uh, Long, Branch. Long Branch. Thank you. I had to I had to think because I swallowed the other one so fast. So good deal. And so. I'm uh, just doing a little Long Branch. One of your staples. That's my yeah, staple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that Devil's River, that we got to remember that for uh, our Halloween month activities. Absolutely. That is really good. You likey? Oh, my God. Wow. I can't stop laughing at you with that daggone hat on here. That's <laughs> awesome. Did we have that other Yeah, we're, we're probably going to have to visit that later. The, the other, yeah, the one that I was having trouble getting. Yeah, you got it all. Yeah, yeah I got it fixed. Yeah. What, you got a story to tell about that? Uh, I just wanted to show a picture. You want me to show the picture now? Yeah. Well. Okay. Okay, so here we've been waiting patiently all day to figure out what's the story behind this ladder picture. Well, that's simply that's you got a that new is, job. That's my step ladder. I, of course, I never got to really know my real ladder. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. uh, all uh, th that was it. Yeah, that that's, was, what, that, that's what I waited for. Well, you know, I, I didn't make any promises. <laughs> it, it's not. It's, it's not that you're stupid. You just have bad luck making good decisions. That's all. <laughs> it's not that you're stupid. You just have bad luck thinking. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, sorry, mom. Uh, uh, sorry. But do you, you got the wah wah wah, yeah. don't you? Because we could have used. That. Okay. So true. I, uh, I okay. just uh, thank God it's only water. I just, I just literally just christened my new shirt because you know every new shirt that I have. It is a cool shirt. It Shauna a did a great shirt. job. Yeah, she did. Sorry, yeah. Shauna. Shauna. It's only water though, honey. Shauna and Kayla visited that uh, moonshine distillery in North Carolina and brought us back some stuff. Is it Walton's? Yeah. Walton's. Jack so, Walton's uh, distillery. We yeah. have a, when we do, eventually we'll do a moonshine. We'll, we'll do a show and we'll dedicate it to moonshine. So uh, that, the, the, owner, we are, we the owner operator has agreed to uh, participate in our show and okay. just, uh, you know, help, help us with uh, part of that. So that'll so we'll, be interesting. We'll, We'll talk about that later because I have some ideas or some things like questions I have and different things about that distillery. So maybe we can iron all that out. Okay. So. And for What's anyone that's watching us for the first time tonight, you're probably thinking, "What is up with this show? Uh, you guys are like, whoa!" But we have we have gotten up to a rocky start <laughs> even before the cameras were rolling. It was a rocky start. Uh, you did a little. Oopsie over there, yeah. and oh yeah, we That's were having right. trouble getting stuff loaded, and, but hey, we finally pulled together. Just so does anybody it. have say, before we move on to to, yeah. to yeah. the topic at hand? What does anybody have St. Patrick's Day plans for next week? I do nope. not. Nope. No, our first time in years that we have no plans for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, well, we'll maybe be, we'll come uh, over to your house. We'll be well, we'll yeah, we won't be there. But Perfect. Sleep, just leave the door locked. <laughs> Um, you have any nice furniture? We'll be or? watching the our favorite band, Gaelic Storm, who we usually ah. see every time around St. Patrick's Day in Cleveland. But obviously, with COVID, that's not happening. So they're doing a live broadcast. So we'll be watching that. And uh, I don't know. We might have some whiskey. Well, you're probably right about that. So I usually do a St. Patrick's Day party, but this year I'm not doing it. But maybe we'll get invited to somebody else's house. Or maybe we'll crash someone else's house. That's true, too. We'll probably end up at the Schnitzel house. Oh, God, nothing good can come from that. Amen. Uh, so I was there yesterday for uh, uh, Das Schnitzel house, and uh, the, they're working diligently on the uh, brewery that they're I doing. I can't wait. So uh, well, I think it's uh, Schnitzel. 
Schnitzel Ale Brewery or something like that. I can't remember. Schnitzel. They Schnitz have Ale a, Brewery. Yeah. They have a yeah. link on Facebook, yeah. so you can so. Uh, check out some of their pictures. It's and, coming uh, along nice. Goran just bought another restaurant. Are you kidding me? Nope. Is it close to home here? Uh, no. It's on the west side again? Sch Schnitzel Express. Huh. So it's more of a takeout kind of deal. So Yeah. They just bought it yesterday. Well, he's oh, good for him. Yeah, absolutely. Busy guy. Lots of things going yeah, on there. Good guy. So. So me and him have been friends for a long time. Yeah. Great dude. Great, great story place. about how you guys met, yeah, too. One day we're going to have to go into That's that. That's a great story. Yeah, well, sometime we're going to have Matt will be back and be a guest some night. And that'll be, well, that's a good time for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So I think it's time to, let's let's move in tonight's, to uh, tasting tonight's whiskey. Um, but uh, I think as we uh, are, we're going to go into it uh, tonight, we're going to be tasting blue Wait. spot and uh, be time for be a good time for hey everyone it's time for the bottle cam the bottle cam <laughs> right. very cool we love our bottle cam that's awesome yeah. blue spot seven year old <laughs> cask strength pot still irish whiskey so that's uh I'm excited you know a cask strength Irish whiskey. There's not a lot of those, at least that I see when I'm looking at stuff. Well, and I, um, we were talking about the proof before yeah. the show started, and I um, happened to ask you, because I forgot to check, what's the proof on this? And you said... 58.7? Mm -hmm. 58.7. So it's 117 proof Irish whiskey. Who's heard of that? Yes. That even put hair on an Irishman's no. chest. It could. Yeah. All I can think of is a dang on Lucky Charms guy <laughs> <laughs> with like a hairy chest. <laughs> oh my goodness. Woo! Anyway, Mr. Sh you guys want to hear a little bit about? Yes. Yeah, uh, let's let's, uh, let's do. Let's do. So I'm excited because uh, last season we had talked, we had done a show actually almost a year ago today where we featured Green Spot, which is the more commonly um, seen brand out. Right. And at the time they were talking about reintroducing Correct. Uh, Blue Spot, but it was just rumors and they didn't want to say anything. So it's pretty cool that almost a year to the day we're able to do the blue spot and do uh, a little tasting on that so I'm excited to try it um, yeah. it's been out of commission since the early 1960s um, they quit making it in, in the 1960s and they just brought it back in November last year um, I'm very excited to try it I looked online and it is not available anywhere um, if you can find it, you can get put on a waiting list, and I saw prices around a hundred dollars. It's a hundred bucks. Yeah, I I, uh, I stopped at the uh, my one of my spots at the local liquor store, and uh, my friend Avtar um, says, "Oh my God, Greg, I just unloaded the truck. You you're gonna love some of this product." So I'm like, "Okay, well, what do you got?" So he gives me all everything he's got. I said, right, "Give me one of each." He's like, "Okay." So um, so. I b bought that, and uh, at the same time, I bought the uh, Alberta uh, Canadian blend um, rye whiskey, which was oof, terrible as far as I was concerned. But uh, and some other products. So uh, I said, instead of packing it, let's let's drink it. So, and that's not like me, because anything I get rare, right away I stash it. So, so I'm in, I'm anxious to try it because the green spot is fantastic. So. Yeah, it was. Um, and I know this is cast strength, so you know I'm expecting heat and different things like that. But I've had the yellow spot as well. Didn't care for the yellow spot at all. Really, yeah. really. So that's you know I, that's one of the ones I see that usually gets pretty high. Yeah. Ones, so. It's 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 real hot. Hmm. It, it drinks like a knob curry, as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's it, again just my personal opinion. It's interesting because they're all their products are, are a color: blue spot, green spot, yellow spot. There's a red spot. Right. And um, the way that they got their name is back in the day. So they would go to the Jameson Distillery at the time to get the spirits from from them, and then they would age it. 
and they would mark the different barrels with a different color depending right. on how long it was aged. So blue spot was seven years, green spot was 10 years, yellow was 12, and red was 15. Right, right. So um, they actually said that once the blue spot was released in November of 20, it reunited the entire spot family. So green spot, like you said, has been regularly available, but they had brought yellow spot out in 2012 and red spot in 2018. Right. Um, now, I don't know how readily available the yellow or the red are now. I know I, know, I some, haven't seen them in the stores. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but I think that, uh, uh, Stephen, if you're listening, um, for some reason, I think Steve had the red spot. I don't remember, I, and I think he bought it local here uh, when he was in at that time. But I know that he's had the yellow and, and the green, but I think he's also had the red as well. But I, I'm almost positive. If I'm wrong, let me know, Steve. Let me know. Yeah. Steve likes Irish yeah. whiskeys and stuff like that. So, yeah. But um, I think, as you said, okay, as I said, it, it's in there for no less than seven years in bourbon casks, uh, sherry butts, Portuguese Madeira casks, and it is all at cask strength. Yeah. It's, it's finished in the Madeira cask, right? So yes. yes. That's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, that sounds fantastic to me. It's going to be very interesting. It will be. So the, yeah. the master distiller, Kevin O'Gorman, um, he said it contains much older Madeira cask whiskey. So he knows that since he joined the company in 1998, that's when some of the bottles were filled. So it could be aged even longer, but it's at least seven years. Hmm. Nice. Okay, okay, so that sounds like they they've aged in separate casks and then they're blending it. That's what it sounds like to me. Hmm. As opposed to, you know, it stays in bourbon sure. for most of its life, then they transfer it to a sherry butt for two years or a year or two years. Correct. Interesting. Okay. Nice. And at cask strength, man, 117 proof, that's uh, it's about as about as bold as it gets. Have you heard of an Irish whiskey with that high of a No, proof? I haven't. I, you know, I Probably not my area of expertise, Irish whiskey, but I, I'm not aware of any. I, I've never seen bottles that are cast. I don't see that many that are cast strength. Um, I'm sure that Redbreast has one. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not common. And it, it's a plus with the cat, the uh, Madeira finishing. That's, that's uh, I don't know, sets it apart a little bit. I'm getting anxious to try it, I'll tell you that much. Wait on you but guys. we got some more information? No, that's oh. about it. I'm, I'm anxious to try it, too. I don't want to talk about it too much. All right, well, let's just pass this around. All right. It's uh, very dark for an Irish whiskey. It is very dark for an that's Irish whiskey. That's what I noticed right off the top. Yeah, it's, it looks more like a Scottish whiskey. That's been um, finished. In Smells great. What do you get on the nose, Jerry? Sure, you gotta you gotta refresh your palate there. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Let me do that as well. I'm going with the uh, lemon Pellegrino today. Oh, you think that's gonna throw you off? Nope, I think it's gonna cleanse my palate a lot better. Okay. I have that here too. Maybe I'll try that too. See if it changes it. But. Ooh. All right. So. You guys went in already? What do you think? I'm getting sherry out of it, that's for sure. Well, definitely some I, dark, uh, fruit. dark fruit. I, I got some nope. almost like a, a, some orange peel and, mm -hmm. and almost like a, I want to say a tropical fruit. Like I get the orange in it for sure, no doubt about it. I don't know, uh, maybe like a mango or something like that. Some kind of a tropical. If it drinks as good as it smells, we're going to be yeah, very happy. It does. It's it's a very unique nose on here. I will definitely say it's got a. I, I get a citrusy. I can't. I can't pinpoint what like it is. A, lime, a little bit of a lime peel or a lime zest. You're going to laugh at me, but um, for some reason I have that hint of banana in it. Okay. But a little bit, a yeah. little light I mean, on, I, yeah. Yeah, 
Well, just kind of, just kind of, it's fruit. just there. So, so you go with yeah. tropical fruit. So I'll roll with that. But, you know, I, I, it, it, very faint banana. I feel, I, I, I smell yeah. on it. it. Smells good. Yeah, it's got a lot of uh, fruit esters. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that's. Ooh. Well, that, uh, smells great. Wine cask. Yeah. Aging. Ooh. When you cup your hand around the. I, I, I tried that yeah. many times. I can't do it. <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah. You got this little glass, and there's these paws. Well, just go, you know. <laughs> oh, and okay. then I'm, I got something sweet in there, like some. Okay, I, I'm I'll reading. Get candied them. almonds. Or I get something. the. I, I get you know. I get the vanilla. I get the oak. Yeah. Believe it or not, but. It's funny because as you guys are talking, and I and I try not to do this because I, I look ahead of time to get the nose on, get the notes on the nose and the taste and, and all of that, and I try not to look. But as I went down to smell, I saw this one word, and it was screaming. And as soon as I smelled it, I'm like, yes, that's what it is. And that is so unique. Um, you guys are going to be... Oh, okay. Tell us, what do you got? Was, this, was, it a no, was it the nose? It goes? is something you would never, ever think of in a whiskey. So Grandma's I could... panties? <laughs> <laughs> Grandma doesn't stink. Grandma doesn't stink. <laughs> anyway, so I pulled this from the... Uh, the green spot, the spot distillery, um, actually Middleton, I think is the distillery, but I, I took it from their website. So they say that it is a light mix of pineapple. Ah, okay. And okay. here's the one where I said, yes, that is it. Kiwi. Okay. okay. I don't, I'm, I don't hear that. I'm I sticking with mango, but, uh, Kiwi. I, I, but okay. Okay. So the, so definitely may, maybe some, I'm confusing. I know it sounds fruits, stupid. So. Maybe I'm confusing the banana with the pineapple. But yes, I get. So you said that. You're exactly right. It it is pineapple too. So, but I I still get that hint. I get the kiwi strong. Uh, now kiwi, that I'm, but I do yeah, get I the. Can, uh, I do. I, I, for some reason, I still I still smell that little bit of banana. Yeah. So okay. there is there is more. So yeah. um, along with the pineapple and the kiwi, there's green banana. Lime okay. zest, okay. followed by pot still spices, okay. baked apple, hazelnut, and toasted wood. I get the I toasted like wood. Almond, maybe. So maybe that's maybe where I'm getting that oak. I maybe that's where I'm getting that oak from. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So like uh, candied almonds, I think what I said. But yeah, I okay. do get the candied almonds. I see yeah. how that is. Yeah, yeah, definitely there. So. Okay. Well, I mean, so I gotta unique. taste this thing now. Are we ready? I can't I'm wait. Ready. I gotta right. clear my I'm palate ready. one more time because I don't want to ruin this. It's heavy. Not a lot of legs in it. All right, I'm going in. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Different on the palate. Different. Different from the nose. Hmm. But. Wow, there's a lot going on there. Mm hmm Not as fruity as I would have expected it to be. It's it's more nutty. I get more like something very floral going on there. Like Yeah. I don't know. Very much a, a floral tone. And then I get more like a berry uh, dark berries that I didn't get on the on the nose. It's so. it's definitely a long finish. Mm -mm. You think so? Yeah, I'm still tasting it. Hmm. I get a yeah. I get nuts. I don't get I don't get berries. Um, def I get some chocolate, some little Ooh. bit of cocoa on the finish. It's a, a little spicy, but not overpowering. No, spicy. as it should be as a castor, it's going to have some heat. Proof. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's very good. good. Yeah, it makes very you good. forget that it's 117 yeah. proof because yeah. it doesn't taste that yeah, that strong. I, hmm. I still get um, berries in the in the middle of the, of the palate, um, cocoa on the finish, some much more almost like. Um, Violets or some kind of a nice. Floral I could, I could see where you would say berry in there, and if I was gonna pick a berry in here, in my personal opinion, um, dingleberry. I, dingleberries. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
a little bit of touch of Cottonelle. <laughs> but uh, I, I would say, if anything... What do you expect? This is the Whiskey Roundtable. <laughs> oh, it was the first berry that popped in my head. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I get two berries. I get Dingleberry. <laughs> <clears throat> but I would say, uh, if anything, I get Blackberry. Ooh. Yeah, that's. I agree. It's, there's a dark berry yeah. I said, yeah. So, um, that's what I'm sticking with. Yeah. Did you guys try this? You sure. guys no, like do you want it? some? That's what I'm talking about. Excuse me, kids. Some of our audience members. Audience, we have audience participation here on the Whiskey Roundtable. Which is one of the pluses of yeah. stopping by and hanging with us. Greg, that head is just that killing me. That tends to continue after the show as well. Um, Matt Souza, how you doing? Matt! Whoop, whoop! Sorry he's late. He was washing baby bottles. Oh, oh you're all domesticated now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, did Steve ever reply back? I'm curious. Steve, uh, I get what you say about the yellow spot. I didn't like it either. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Nick T, I think, I hope we didn't miss you. You went out to go ride the bike. Uh, you're with Everett. Uncle Greg and Aunt Karen Amen, saying, hey, bro. Everett. That's all Steve said on that? There's nothing else up with it? Um, I'm so going I think back he's, up. I think he's had them all. I'm almost positive he has. Uh, blah, blah, so blah, blah, did blah, you blah. have any official um, uh, palate notes or tasting notes I, on this? Can I do. Oh, okay. I do. Uh, yeah, let's see. Steve, I've had them all. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, I, he, yeah, so. I think I said okay. that. I get, oh, did he say that? Okay, yep. thank you for picking awesome. that up. Uh, generally speaking, Mark says dingleberries tend to be blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> is that Anderson? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> Mark. Oh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to be blackberries. Well, maybe brownberries. <laughs> and depending on what you oh, ate, they could shit. be green. Anyway. <laughs> Whoa. I can't wait to get Mark back on the show. There we I can't go. Wait. I can't wait. So, yeah, tasting notes. A smooth mouth feel, which I would definitely agree yeah, Absolutely, with. absolutely. Uh, a subtle mix of fruit, which doesn't say which ones, but come fruit. On, berries, come on. A hint of clove oil. Mmm. Yeah. Florals and berries. Mm, come on. It's I don't get either. the clove. It's so Cracked peppercorns. Okay, I get that. I get sure. that. Sure. Sweet spices, vanilla. I said vanilla. And cinnamon. I can get that maybe because of this the the quick spice hit you get. Yeah, maybe baking spices if you will. I can, like if you take like a stick of big red gum and that sure that quick hit you get, um, and it says that adds to the woods nutty contribution. No nut skins, Jennifer Boggs. Sorry. Oh, oh gosh. But nuts, no, no, no berries. Know. They didn't go into the berries. I'm sorry. That's all right. There's black. There's dark berry. In Everybody's there. palate's different. And whether they're dingles, I don't know. But they're right. dingles. Uh, so uh, apparently there's two berries in there. Yeah. For <laughs> sure. Uh, and know. there's there's a floral note. I'm, I'm sticking with violet. There's like a, you know, African violet. So that's what I'm sticking with. There you go. And, uh, somebody's uh, going to back me up out there on that. So, yeah, so, so, Greg, you said there was a, it was a lasting finish. That's what the notes say. It's yeah, definitely a long finish. Lasting, distinctly yep. palatable. Yep. With the it's balance. It's warming. It's warm. It's, it's pleasantly warm. warming without being hot and burning. You know, That's, it's just a uh, very nice, very drinkable, sippable. So I mean, I would love know, this with a, what cigar would you pair this with, Greg? Just I would actually pair that with a uh, full body cigar. Would you? No. I would. Just because, because you kind of go with the alcohol. So, so you know, the in my personal opinion, um, you know, anything I feel anything over uh, ninety proof. Uh, when you get into the cast strengths up to maybe 130 to 140 proof, um, you know, a full body cigar is what you need. Yeah, if you gave me this in a blind taste, and you know, if I didn't know anything about it, you said, you know, guess what proof this is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I might say, you know, 95. I might say as much as 100, but not mm -hmm. 117. Yeah, it doesn't drink like no. 117 at all. No. It's it's much more enjoyable for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so I really I. I'm a fan. I, I really like this. Um, if I, you know, if I could find it, I would, I would probably pick it up for sure. Um, I, let's have another bottle cam, shall we? Oh, another bottle cam. Spot. Oh, I'm another sorry. Let me go there. I like this one. This one's got a great intro. So here. It comes. Hey everyone, it's time for the bottle cam. The bottle cam. Okay. Okay. Can 
be everybody's everything. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. No, this is... uh, I really, really enjoy this. Okay, Okay. so I think we'll let... uh, Let's start with Big G. What do you... What do you... What do you score this on the uh, Whiskey Round Table 0 to 5 scale? Uh, I'm going to score it at a solid 3.7. 3.7. Very respectable score for the round table. So do you, do you want to just give a little background as to why you came up with that? Well, I mean, or? everything that we just talked about. You know, for the yeah. proof, being a cast strength, being an Irish whiskey, being a, uh, a, a new, intro, you know, reintroduced, you know, product, I... Um, you know, yeah. we we kind of henpecked up every, everything that we felt was in there, and we were yeah. all we all had a, the same different, you know, we all had the same different picks, so to say, you know. But every at the end of the day, we all we all hit on the same thing at yeah. one point. So, yeah. and I um, keep tasting this, and I don't change my no what I'm tasting. I uh-huh. still stick it's good. by what I said. So, it's good. Um, Karen, what do you think you'd score this thing? Um, I have a hard time. Remembering that this is an Irish Irish whiskey, whiskey. You're exactly right about that. And it's not just because I've been drinking Long Branch before the show. Um, it does not drink like an Irish whiskey. It does not at all. It does drink more like a bourbon. It exactly. It, really does. it yeah. does drink like a bourbon. I agree. Um, to me, it does. Okay. To me, yeah. To it, me, I would a, agree. So it's a it's a pot still, Irish correct? Whiskey, which means it's probably all malted barley or i mean it's all uh barley so probably most of it's malted and probably a third of the batch is unmalted barley okay. maybe a little bit of other grain but that's probably but with this proof i'm, I'm yeah there's there's some there's probably some neutral spirit in there too but but uh yeah certainly no nothing like corn nothing like rye no nothing right like that right so but uh yeah, interesting that yeah he comes across it. Anyway, what score? What do you think? You oh no, you're fine. Keep going. I'm good. Yeah, what do you? It's letting me think about what score. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I really like this. Um, is it something I have to have in my on my bar? You know, f- for me, four and over is something I would kind of really want to have on my bar at all times. It maybe doesn't make it quite to that level, but it's a it's a solid. It's a solid three point eight for me. Awesome. I, I really like it. It's it's. Uh, you know, I think the uh, you know with the Jamesons and and all these different companies that are doing Irish whiskeys, I think in the last year they've really stepped up their game. So um, this is something I you know if I can find it again, I definitely would buy another bottle. It's a hundred dollars, but I, my personal opinion, it drinks like a hundred dollars. You know, it's yeah. It's really yeah, I don't think so. it's you know eighty pounds. I think. I don't know what the Michael Collins costs. You know, my brother will tell us that if he wants to. Uh, you know, with the Michael Collins, um, that was fantastic. That drank like a solid, solid Oof. Irish whiskey, so to say. That was amazing. And, uh, but, I could have drank that whole bottle you know, myself. So we had the yeah. green spot. We've had the blue. I've had the yellow. My brother's had them all, um, and he's pretty diverse in Irish whiskeys and scotches for sure. Yeah. So. You know, so Karen, I'm gonna roll with him. We're still so. waiting for you. Yeah, your I know, score. and and I've really been thinking, and it, and it's so hard for me to score. Um, I'm gonna go with my original thought, which is a three point nine. All right, there we okay. go, kids. Um, that's nine a, eight yeah. seven. Uh, just like I said, I like how uh, you know Karen's uh, kind of overall taste for whiskey in general has. From the, just the time I've been on the show, it's has grown. Creeped. Yeah. <laughs> I think she wasn't going to give much more than a three. Like a marijuana plant. Early on. Blah, 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 blah. So now we're going to. That's uh, a different show, kids. Yeah, now she's, uh, <laughs> she's uh, liking them more and more. So that's that's a good sign. So, yeah. No, yeah, I. Yeah. You know, I. I really am, um, and I can't say enough about how it is not an Irish whiskey. It is not what you think going into it. Correct. Um. You know, I'm just. I want to look real quick back at the green spot to see what I found out about that, if there's anything about proof. Isn't green spot the official name of the distillery? Uh, I don't know. Middleton. Middleton. Oh, Middleton. Okay, okay. That's right. Yeah, that's Middleton. My bad. Middleton. My bad. Oh, I, th- My bad. I think that might, might have a... So, oh, yeah, I, I will... Speaking s- of that, I have a little news thing on that. 
later okay. when we get to the news. So, so we, I, do, I don't have the, uh, we've got it over there at the bar. I'm not going to do So I, I, I was I was going to bring up when you were talking about Middleton. So I I, I heard you, but I you know miss, missed that. But anyway, as far as the distillery. So um, Middleton products are very, very good. And I don't have any Middleton Irish whiskeys, but in my travels, you do now. I've right in my travels, I've had many Middleton products, um, and I have you know caskets that I've that I've have brought home. Caskets? Yeah, that's when you put them in a the wooden box like the Doers. And oh, all those. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move <laughs> along, kids. Move along. Nothing to see. Nothing to see. Yeah, this is your newbie over here talking whiskey. Yeah. But uh, I definitely want to, uh, and I've been saying it for a couple years, I definitely want to. Um, hey, Karen Helen Keller, you really got it, sister. <laughs> you all stupid. Hey, now. You're not really stupid. but <laughs> You just got bad luck. Got bad luck thinking. That's all. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> there we uh, are. There's the whiskey roundtable group I love. Uh, <laughs> what but, do you expect? This is the whiskey roundtable. Oh my goodness! But you should I, see I, us two hours from now. I'm right. definitely, definitely, definitely going to build an inventory of Middleton products, and we're going to do those on okay. the show occasionally. That sounds that'd like be a great idea. That sounds like a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Right. Yeah. I, so, maybe, I, so maybe throughout the year. I'm sorry. No. Please. Maybe throughout the year, um, you know, we, we always try to do a scotch, a bourbon, a whiskey, and a rye. And maybe sometimes we switch out the scotch with an Irish whiskey. So I thought maybe if I build up some uh, Middleton products, we can kind of swap that out. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. I think it'd be or a great idea. Swatch out a, we can swap out a bourbon with a... <laughs> Doug's no, like, no, 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 no. No. don't be <laughs> chipping me on my Scottish no, whiskey. My, you got a better chance of my mother crawling out of her urn. I sorry. told you she's a feisty Sorry, old. Mom. But anyway. She's a feisty old bag. She may be... Sorry, Don, sorry Donna. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I, anyway, I will ahead. say that I, I really enjoyed this... Um, I know yeah, it's I rare. Too. I am very grateful that we were able to try this. So I'd like to thank their... Uh, what did you say? This was Avatar? Avatar. Thank you, Avatar, yeah. for keeping us in mind with this. This is this is really, really so a, they're, a they're, treat. I, go ahead. Go, so uh, I spoke with Avatar today, but I did, was not able to get there uh, today um, because of other circumstances. But um, So there's a couple new things out. Um, that are different proofs, same product, different proofs. There's three different proofs, but uh, I've committed to two of those. The problem is they're two hundred dollars a bottle. For the blue spots? No, for something I want to do on the show. Oh, I'm that sorry. Was just a now surprise for that just came to Ohio. Okay. That uh, I have two of the three proofs that I will pick up tomorrow, and uh, and if I can, if I can find the third one, we'll do. You know, we can do one proof. The, the least proof, the second proof, the third proof, throughout, you know, throughout our season here. So does okay. that make sense to you? So oh, that sounds great. So that doesn't have anything to do with the uh, Ohio Liquor email that came it out. It does not. It does okay. not have to do that. Right? Okay. Because no. and and I don't know. Now if they're you guys doing. They're doing. So they're so so the Ohio Liquor is doing a Blanton's. Um, they're doing a, uh, a e. Eagle Rare, and then they're doing um, a Taylor. A, a, oh, I'm Isn't sorry. Isn't it? Is an E H Taylor? Eagle Rare, E.H. Taylor. And Blanton's. And, and Blanton's, right. But the E.H. Taylor's, they're doing different barrels. So there's like 10 different barrels for the, uh, it's, it's not cast strength. I can't think of the uh, name off the top of my head. But if you jump on the Ohio Liquor, it, it offers it. But, um, but I would like to, um, sorry, are you looking at it? Yeah, I, I just got the email today. I probably just, like, I was like, oh, really? Now they're going to do this? But anyway, the, what what is offered to me today is two different proofs, and if I can get the third proof, then I'm going to grab the third proof. So, but again, huh? 200 bucks a bottle, so I'm going to spend some money. It sounds and, uh, exciting. It sounds yeah, serious. So we'll, we'll, we'll to try it out. So awesome. seeing how that uh, unveils. But, uh, oh, here. I, I just it better be good for I just pulled it yeah. up. <laughs> So for the first time, we have OHLQ single barrel selections of Blanton's 
Eagle Rare and E.H. Taylor. Correct. They're going to start taking entries on the Ohio Liquor Control Board on beginning Monday. March 15th at 12.01 a.m. through March 22nd at 11.59 p.m. 11.59 p.m. So, there you All are. All right. Well, so, you know, maybe you get lucky in the lottery. So, we'll see. But It'd be I'm nice if you could just, you know, buy stuff on the, on the competitive market for whatever it's, what it's worth. But, um, okay. St um, Steve says, when you go shopping, add some kill bacon to your shopping list. Uh, okay. uh, Kurt, I don't think that's here in Ohio. I'm sorry. Steve. Did you say Steve? Steve. I'm sorry. Steve. I don't think uh, that we have that here in Ohio. Uncle Steve, we could use a little I've, I've started checking. Let me just check something yeah. real quick, kids. I'm sorry. I just want to... Uh... Um, well, why don't... Is it time for the wizard? Well, it on, is so time on, for the hang wizard. On, oh, wait. Kids, hang on. You have to do this first? Okay, so the E.H. Taylor, the different barrel picks that they have are single barrels. Yes. So, yeah. you know... They're all single barrels, from what I understood from the email. Well, they have rye, they have, you know. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot. Okay, so. Okay. Nice. All right. All right, move along, kids. Okay. Nice well, so let's here. continue with our... It's time for the Whiskey Wizard? Yeah, and this time, it, this Whiskey Wizard, uh, I promise, does have something to do with <laughs> Ireland. And the okay. uh, Whiskey Wizard today is sponsored by Rawhide. By, by Rawhide Firearms. Amen. All right. There you go. All right, guys, we'll be back in about nine minutes. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Whiskey Wizard! It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello, and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say whiskey making takes scientific knowledge an artisan's skill and dedication, and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Okay, so tonight we finish our industry recap for the previous calendar year and trends for the coming year as we look at the Irish whiskey market. Again, it's always a good idea to take a look at how the industry is doing and take a look at the direction things are heading. 2020 was a very good year again for the whiskey industry, despite the global pandemic. As we discussed last time, growth trends continued big time. The global whiskey market is expected to rise 33% from its 2018 level by 2026. It seems that whiskey consumers have decided that premium whiskey is worth the spend. Now let's wrap things up with a look at the Irish water of life. Irish whiskey is technically the first whiskey to be made in Europe as Irish monks learned the distilling arts from the Moors in Spain. Later, this knowledge would first make its way into the westernmost parts of Scotland. In 2020, the Irish whiskey category was expected to surpass its goal of 12 million cases. While the sector was on track to hit its target, the global pandemic did slow sales, at least for a while. The Irish Whiskey Association says that despite the challenges presented by COVID-19, the Irish whiskey industry showed remarkable resilience in 2020. They say drinkers have continued to trade up to premium options at home as the market has seen an increased demand in super premium and above references. They also say that there is more innovation to come from Irish distillers as they experiment with different wood finishings to push the once narrow boundaries of Irish whiskey. The top markets for Irish whiskey in 2019 were the U.S., followed by the global travel retail and Russia. However, the IWA claims that in all the key markets, there has been a very strong performance in retail and e-commerce by Irish whiskey, and the long-term trend is still very strong. Alongside the pandemic, Irish whiskey also faced challenges from Brexit and the EU-US trade disputes. Single malt Irish whiskey from Northern Ireland was hit with a 25% tariff by the US in October of 2019. Still, looking ahead, it seems there's a large opportunity for Irish whiskey to see the biggest comparative percent growth of the three major regional whiskey categories. A bit of a review of Irish whiskey seems advised at this point. First, 
it must be distilled and matured in Ireland. Well, sure. Secondly, it must come from a mash of malted cereals which has been fermented by the action of yeast distilled at an ABV of no more than 94.8% and aged for at least three years in wooden casks. The resulting spirit must have a minimum ABV of 40%. There are a few Irish whiskey types, single pot still, single malt, single grain, and blended. If the word single appears on the label, it means the whiskey was completely distilled on site in one distillery. Single malt whiskey was made entirely from malted barley in a pot still. Single pot still whiskey was made in a pot still using a mix of malted barley and unmalted grain. Single grain whiskey, which can actually come from a variety of grains, is made from continuous distillation in a column or coffee still. And this latter category is most commonly used in blends. Blended Irish whiskey is pretty much a mixture of all the types just mentioned. Because the majority of Irish whiskeys are triple distilled and made from a variety of grains, they tend to be lighter in taste when compared to scotch or bourbon. Since they don't use peat during production, the spirit does not typically contain any of the smoky elements. Generally speaking, Irish whiskeys are soft, light, somewhat grainy, nutty, and sweet. So if you object to scotch because you don't like peat or smoke, maybe Irish whiskey will be just the thing for you. A quick note about a few of the top Irish whiskeys as you begin or continue your exploration. Let's start with Teeling. The Teeling Distillery opened in 2015 and is equipped with three copper pot stills. It became Dublin's first new distillery in over 125 years. It was founded by the Teeling family, of course. The small batch statement is certainly a serious dram, but it is the Teeling single grain that apparently brought attention to this label. The single grain delivers creamy notes of chocolate milk and a touch of rich spices that lingers into its persistent finish. Then of course we have Jameson's, more than the world's most popular Irish whiskey brand by a substantial margin. Jameson's is one of the best selling labels anywhere. I mean, just try to find a bar on the planet that doesn't keep Jameson's on hand. What's surprising, however, is the consistent quality and drinkability delivered by the label despite the mass production. Expect smooth notes of toasted malt with hints of cane sugar. Moving beyond that, there's no shortage of interesting expressions to try. Naturally, you can do no wrong picking up the 18 year. Thanks to a license from a previous operation, Bushmills claims to be the oldest licensed distillery in the world. It was established by Hugh Anderson in 1708 in the County Atrium in Northern Ireland. It's also one of Ireland's best, offering a range of popular blends and acclaimed single malts. The 10-year single malt is fruity, full-bodied, and sweet, while the 21-year single malt is basically liquid heaven, according to some. I've not yet had the pleasure. Ask any devoted Irish whiskey fan to name his favorite Irish whiskey, he or she will likely say Red Breast. It was founded in 1903 in County Cork. This popular brand delivers an exceptional product, albeit one of the more expensive options out there. The 12 year cast strength is one of the strongest Irish whiskeys you can find, and many think one of the best. Personally, I'd love to sample the 21 year old sometime. I hear it's got tons of body, lots of honey, dark fruit, and a subtle, smooth cereal grain on the palate. While still dry from Jameson, this single pot still Irish whiskey goes down its own road of delights. Okay, Green Spot. Here's another single pot still Irish whiskey that hails from the same distillery as Jameson, but nevertheless strikes its own distinguished core. It's aged and matured in a combination of ex-bourbon and ex-sherry. Green Spot is known for aromas of vanilla and toffee, along with deep fruit esters on the front end. Of course, there are more that we can cover, and the variety will continue to grow in the years ahead based on all the current trends. I guess we'll just have to taste and feature some of those on the Whiskey Roundtable Show. 
So the Irish whiskey market may now be the fastest growing broad segment as it offers brands that seem to be accelerating to meet the global demand. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable. Slan Java, and may your home always be too small to hold all of your friends. And now, back to the live show. All right. Sorry. We're back. <laughs> Again, we were out. Messing around. <laughs> Drinking whiskey. No. So, but no, I had grabbed the. Yeah, whoa. Front <laughs> row. Front row. Family show, kids. No, just kidding. I'm feeling violated right now. Yeah. Good. What we got? The green spot. I pulled that off the bar. Correct. Did you? Or did you happen to catch the proof on that? Uh, it looked like it was eighty proof. Eighty proof. Okay, so that there you go. That's a typical Irish whiskey, right there. Yeah. So we always say on the show about if you want to get into drinking whiskeys, Irish whiskey is always the best start, in my personal opinion. It's a good place to start. It is a good place to mm -hmm. start. Can't go wrong with Jameson. And the price is right on the Jameson line for sure. You know, you can get a great drink for, you know, twenty some dollars, thirty some dollars. The teeling that I was drinking during that yes. episode was is uh, a very good Irish whiskey, which I'd never had before, I just saw it in the store, and right. because it was something different, I got I, I was very happy with it. So it's the newest distillery, as I said, in Dublin, in some time. So. What was the age on that? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Do you? I know? don't. I don't think it had an age. I don't know if it had an age statement. Um, but uh, yeah. come on, keep going. <laughs> come on, you what? can do it. What? You're, what is quiet. you're getting quiet. No, I thought I heard something. <laughs> oh my All goodness! Right. Well, we so what do we got on the scroll? What do we got on the scroll? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. So, um, Matt wants another outing at Royal Havana. Awesome, Maddie. Yeah. Well, you. there is opportunities, aren't there, over the next three weeks? So yeah. Maybe, so maybe you'll let them know. Matt, uh, I'll give you a call tomorrow and uh, I know that uh, I'm going to be there for the next two weeks for sure and then uh, Dan is going to do uh, my last my last show so to say before uh, Doug gets back so that will be fun last uh, part of a yeah kind of a, a complicated uh, we don't thing know, we're putting together we don't yeah I don't know how that's going to work but we're going <laughs> to we're going to try <laughs> exactly. we're going to try our best hey, that's we got the whiskey plans. round table what do you expect <laughs> yeah yeah we what do you expect? This is the whiskey round table. Yeah, this, so, I mean, yeah, we're it's a work in progress. We'll see how it comes out. But it's it's been a lot of fun so far. Mm -hmm. But uh, just just you know, we're always working ahead. We're always making Absolutely. plans to we'll always try to, to make it a little better, make this show better. And uh, we're failing miserably, some, but we keep going. There's right some room right for improvement. For sure. <laughs> I think if we took those Irish hats off the dolls, it <laughs> puts some. Dago hats on there, we probably get a little bit more respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, is there like okay, so okay, Mark? Well, let's say that for Italian whiskey. Month. <laughs> well, thank you. That's where I was going. So we've got Irish whiskey, and then like you've got Cinco de Mayo. So like, when when do us Italians get them on? Well, can I tell can I tell a story about Italians? Italians or Italians? It, yeah, Italians. <laughs> okay. the Italians. Yeah. All right, so, all right, kids, sit down, because you're going to have to sit down for uh -oh. this shit. So the three shortest books I've ever read... Oh, no, you're not going to tell that story. ...were Who's Who in Poland, oh, shit. Italian War Heroes, and Black People I Met While Yachting. So anyway, go ahead. We got... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I need to... Uh, I think we need to... He did it. He went there. Sorry. Try again. Yeah, okay. well, just my sense of humor, kids. You'll understand. That's why we love him. <laughs> okay, it's time for the news, I think. It is. And I have uh, great news. What's news? I don't have any news today. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Greg, I, you know, what we've been kind of up to is we yeah. were just 
uh, talking about. Uh, uh, the Whiskey Advocate just had an article. They were looking for suitable uh, marriages pairing 11 of Scotland's smokiest single malts with two fine handmade cigars. Awesome. And the winners were the My Father No. 3 Crema, Great which scored 92 points on their you know that uh, one too? top list of 25. And then uh, the Romeo and Julieta 1875 Deluxe No. 1. Another, another good cigar. winner. Very so, good. Sure. Uh, you know, and that's to pair, pairing mm -hmm. uh, the cigar with a um, nice smoky Isla single malt. So. so some of the cigars that we picked uh, you know, one of them was full body. Uh, one of them. Well, let's not give anything away. Okay, it, sorry. It, Never mind, kids. No, 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 no you, can, you can take speed. Oh, look, Elvis. Sure. We just don't so, want to give anything. So, <laughs> so that falls right in line yeah. with what, yeah. what we were talking about. Yeah, right. Okay, so I'll yeah. leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, we got some special stuff coming up with uh, cigars and whiskey. So, uh, Deirdre, Deirdre O'Carroll was appointed as blender. At Middleton Distillery, Irish Whiskey News says. Of course, we Middleton is the distillery that we're we're uh, tasting tonight. The all products. the blue swell, everything we've been talking about. Uh, she's a she looks like a twenty-something young lady who's now the the distiller for Middleton, and uh, we are. And that kind of segues into a, something we have upcoming as a future episode on the Whiskey Wizard is uh, women in whiskey. So. Um, more and more, we, we see some of the ladies get into these uh, high uh, positions as distillers and key roles in whiskey making. So that's exciting. Uh, Shelter Point Distillery wins gold at the Canadian Whiskey Awards. You know, we don't talk enough about Canadian whiskey. That's something I think I want to... Because usually it's yeah. no good. I'm yeah, sorry. Well, <laughs> it doesn't really... I'm sorry. It hasn't Just grabbed me yet. Rewind. But, but we need to... Yeah, I mean, we're always, you know... Here at the Whiskey Roundtable, we're always, <laughs> always open to these. Oh, that's exploring right. Exploring <clears throat> yeah, we are. <clears throat> Shelter uh, Point <laughs> Double Barreled Whiskey won a gold medal at the Canadian Whiskey Awards. But, you know, it's the Canadian Whiskey Awards. Ezra Brooks 99 um, is a straight bourbon Kentucky uh, whiskey that it's 49.5 uh, ABV, just released. Um, I, have I don't it. know if you. I have, have it. it. I have it. Okay. Yep. Very reasonably priced. Yes, it is. And uh, <laughs> is it is it good? That was all in the batch that I got with the uh, uh, Alberta rye. Um, I, I was able to pick up uh, two or three different bottles of the uh, Old Ezra. So uh, one of them was distiller's cut as well. So. Did you try it yet? No, it's upstairs. Well, a whiskey advocate. Um, Usually, you know, pretty discerning, gave it gave it good scores. Old Elk is debuting Sour Mash Reserve, priced at ninety dollars a bottle. Their, their stuff is always and it, just over five thousand bottles available for this first batch. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead. No, I, well, yeah, I, no. I become starting to become a fan. I've just had like a, a couple of things, and, and I've really been impressed with them. Sagamore Spirits rolling out its latest distillers. Select rye, finished in tequila. Cask. There you go. Now you're there. talking my language. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's a limited edition whiskey. Yeah, a lot of panties coming bottles. down right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Proof and Wood is partnered with uh, bar owner Rob Morton to release Idle Hands Small Batch Straight Bourbon as a follow up to their previous collaboration. It's about $55 a bottle with around 6,000 bottles uh, on the market. So. Can, can I stop you? I, yes. You said it was an elk crossing? Old elk. Old elk. Okay. Because what I was thinking of, and I was c combining it with the Canadian whiskey, which was caribou crossing, which we've had. Oh, okay. Buffalo Trace product. And it's a Canadian blend that Buffalo Trace does. So, and it is, and we've had it at... At, we've at had Village it, Martini. Village Martini. So it's uh, a Canadian style it is. that's made at the... Uh, uh, it's, Buffalo Trace is, store. Uh, I'm going to say no. Oh, okay. I'm going to say it's all done in Canadian, and I think Sazerac owns the company. Mm. Oh, okay. Parent. Okay. That's the parent, yeah. It, that's the, and, and I will take back what I said, because I really enjoyed that Caribou Crossing. It's fantastic. 
and uh, every time I try to buy it, it's it's out. Now I could probably get it through through my sources, but um, so far I haven't I haven't tried. But Caribou Crossing is great. So forget about that. We're gonna do that on the show at another time. Yeah, and, I think uh, we should. Well, you know, we'll do something devoted to Canadian whiskey. I mean, mm -hmm. we wanna. Um, you know, we definitely will we'll explore that. So, you know, maybe there's some things we have yet to learn. So, Amen. Uh, the latest batch of barrel bourbons, batch 028, is hitting the shelves. Um, as usual, it's priced at $90 and available in very limited amounts. Something else I found, Bimber Distillery, is you see more uh, English distilleries coming about in making single malts. So, Bimber Distillery adds two new releases. And it's a small batch collection that apparently is getting popular, um, especially in travel retail. It's batched uh, ex bourbon oak cask. Batch uh, three has uh, finished a Oloroso cask. Um, it got very good good reviews at two of the European big European uh, whiskey shows. So, so Bimber from London, England. So. So. Is Lund I mean, you hear Irish, Scottish, but you don't hear English. No, because they, they're, I mean, they're not known for whiskey. But, they're known for beer. But um, in parts of uh, England, they are starting to make, and it's mostly single malt, um, and I would say in style, probably closer to Irish whiskey. But uh, Cameron and I, when we did our tasting, that's mm -hmm. a, a future thing that's going to happen when we roll around to the holidays, but we did that advent calendar. Right, one of the, right. One of the special whiskeys we had, and that was, it was actually an English whiskey, and we he and I were both very impressed with it. We were like, nice. yeah, to, to the point of it's the kind of thing that we definitely want to try to find and have in our collection. So, awesome. So yeah, so I'm, uh, English whiskey's uh, showing up on the radar screen. Um, anyway, so it's about, we're getting about time to wrap up, I guess. Um, so we've yeah. got... Uh, any, any last comments out there? Yeah, I do. Okay. So Mark said Italian whiskey. It's called Vino. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah, it's not that they are known for making some, some quality things to... But they to make a great buy, wine, no sure. doubt about it. No question. Some of the best on earth, for sure. And yeah. Uncle Steve says Ezra Distiller's Cut is very good. Nice. Thank you, Steve, okay, for taking yeah. my... So me and Steve had this conversation uh, probably probably a month ago, Steve, and uh, he, he put out a bunch of <laughs> bottles and he asked me, what should I take? And I, I gave him my suggestion and he took it. So uh, he was very pleased with it. So good deal. Nice. I'm sorry, this goes back to your, your three books. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Go ahead. <laughs> Mark. Rawhide firearms. He's got some great World War II French rifles, never fired and only dropped once. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Mark. That is <laughs> perfect. It was good to see Pat here tonight. Uh, Patrick Patterson, my buddy. A uh, good. Uh, if that isn't an Irish name, I don't know what it is. But he was. Uh, I think he got a pretty good start on his imbibing. He was. Playing golf today. Yeah, that's yeah. What I'm about. So Thanks Greg, for making it, Patrick. Appreciate you being here. Greg, are you going to take us out with and Lord of the Dance tonight? Lord of the what? Dance. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also want to say hi. I got to, nothing to uh, show you about my other charms. Charm. Nobody Anthony wants to see that. Who's out there tonight, Mr. Loud? Thanks for joining us. Oh, really appreciate it. So. All right, kids. Sorry. I want to thank everybody what? for watching. Uh, Amen. If you're with us here live, we had a, watching we, later on. We had a lot of uh, we had a lot of good comments today uh, this morning uh, when I was uh, on uh, Facebook, and uh, it's nice to see people interacting with us. I appreciate that. That's great. Right. That's yes. what makes the show right Amen. there. We Amen. have kind of our uh, usual folks that interact with us live, but there's. More and more folks that are watching, and that's that's good to see. I, I I'm so, hoping everybody likes my Confucius say stuff. Yeah, well, I yeah. think that's that's what's that been, goes uh, without saying. That's what keeps the show yeah, going. Exactly. <laughs> um, we are going to be off. Uh, we have a little bit of a spring break, and uh, we'll be um, we won't be back until, until April. the uh, April the 9th, which would be 
Great. one week after Good Friday. So um, there, some of us are, are traveling, and it just and then you've got Good Friday. So so it's a it's a three week hiatus. So we'll, we'll be on a little bit of a spring break, but we promise we'll come back with. Uh, we got some great shows coming up. Do. We have and some I, great I, things in the works. I, 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 I appreciate excited, the. So. Uh, if uh, I'm, I'm hoping people watch the the uh, the shows while we're gone. Yeah. You know. We have yeah. Some catch up on some sure. some uh, while we're gone. That's a perfect idea. Catch up. You know. Go through. Go back. Go on go, YouTube. Go find back into the archives. You didn't get to see for whatever reason. Check them out. Check them out. Yeah. Oh, I mean, our, great we have people. a lot of shows that are are out, and. Um, you know, pick something. There's, you know. uh, yeah, there's no reason that you can't next Friday uh, grab your whiskey, sit down, and watch one of our other episodes that you haven't seen. That's a great idea, G. And I and hope everybody will do that. Anybody that has my cell phone number, they can uh, uh, text me and comment and do all that stuff. That's yeah. all good. So yeah, these, yeah, you know, we have a good time. It's Reach always reach out to us on well, that shows text, I'll be, yeah, I can be available too. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. So if you have, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. If you didn't do that yet, follow us on Facebook. If you have any questions or Like comments, us. Make sure you like yes. us. <laughs> and you want to be a guest on the show, um, really, it's not that hard. You can comment on Facebook or email us directly at the whiskey roundtable at gmail.com. Uh, I have a few a few closing quotes today. Oh, yes, shit, yes. So son. Because it's uh, to kind of conclude with Irish Whiskey Month here. Uh, again, because this is our last show until April 9th, I have a few here. We'll start with uh, James Joyce, Irish writer poet, who said, The light music of whiskey falling into a glass is one of the most fulfilling interludes within the symphony of life. So, Amen. I like that. Uh, George Bernard Shaw, Irish playwright and critic, said, Whiskey is liquid sunshine. Amen. <laughs> And interestingly, I also liked another thing. It doesn't necessarily have to do with whiskey, but he said, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable man is one who persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Oh, my. All right. All right, kids. Oh, shit. My phone's going off. <laughs> Uh-oh. Rot row. Uh, hang on one second, kids, before we... This uh, might be some, yeah, this some is, good stuff. Yeah, this is uh, Zach Alicious, our producer. So. Oh, our producer, Zach! Zach, hey, wait, hey, everybody say hi to Zach. Look, Dude. it's Zach! We there haven't seen Zach, him in producer. forever. Uh, Zach, he's been, he's been, his work schedule changed, so yeah. he uh, really, it's hard, he has uh, trouble getting here by showtime, so... Uh, ETA 915, so we'll see him in about a half hour. Yeah, Yay. Not a bit, not. he has a special uh, thing to pick up, which I have waiting for him. So, part of our uh, part of our future episodes that we're to doing, come with so. batteries. Huh? No, uh, no, just no it's, right. I just had to ask a question. It's a fire alarm. Yeah, it's no. a fire alarm, kids. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move along. Come on. All right. Well, let's say goodnight, guys. <laughs> okay, if we have to. All, All right, right great. kids. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching the Whiskey Roundtable. I'm Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. All right, kids. We'll catch you in a couple of weeks. Thank Hasta you. Hasta Winnebago. See you on April 9th. Bye-bye. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors. Shutting down, everybody would be trapped with their thoughts. Cause nothing else would pay. Bourbon or scotch, oh no Oh no, no If whiskey, whiskey stopped working Where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money Trying therapy If whiskey, whiskey stopped working What the hell would I do? Tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stop working, whiskey stop working. Oh, whiskey stop working, whiskey stop working. Oh, whiskey stop working, whiskey stop working. Oh. Poor Jack D would be out of a job. Jameson and B would be cut off. Hank Williams songs wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, this whole.